So I don't have my Google Glass today because I lent it to somebody to build an app, but I wanted to start digging in on what the business model of Google Glass might be because Google said there's no, no ads allowed on apps. Uh, so I invited the founder of uh, AdStage, who's one of my favorite advertising companies, to come and just have a chat. And that's going to be a little different than our usual show, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Who are you? So my name is Sahil Jain, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of AdStage. A uh, little background on myself, um, I ended up dropping out of high school to get my first job at Yahoo when I was 17. Um, then tried out college for a bit, went to UC Berkeley, dropped out at 19 to join AOL, doing a little bit of West Coast merger and acquisitions. Uh, and then I actually left very quickly. I couldn't stand the big company bureaucracy. And so I went to start my first company called Trigger.io when I was 20. And then after two years of being a founder there, I had this idea for AdStage, a cross-network ad platform, and I really wanted to see it through. And so I left, and here I am today. Yeah, I, I, I saw you uh, when I judged uh, Cal Canis' launch conference, which another one's coming up soon. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was really impressed with you. And we've done separate shows on your business and, and yep. whatnot, so we can talk about that later. Yeah. But uh, we both started off camera. We started talking about Google Glass, and Google said no advertising in this yep. window that they're going to show us full time. Yep, yep. And so I wondered what an advertising genius like you thinks, <laughs> thinks about that and thinks about what it means for the future of advertising. Definitely. I mean, I wouldn't consider myself a genius, but I think that I have a different perspective because I haven't been in the advertising world for too long. And so, um, yeah, as you said, you know, we've been talking off camera about the various things that, you know, Google could do um, or how they would include or be inclusive of advertising on the Google Glass. And I think that there's a couple of things that we can start with and jump right in. Um, both from kind of the ad authoring perspective, so as an ad, you know, an advertising creator, maybe you're on the brand side or an agency, or from the consumer side, how are these consumers going to see ads at some point on the Google Glass? And is it going to be, you know, whether you call it an ad or an update, it doesn't really matter these days. Yeah. And so I think we should dig into that. Yeah, absolutely. Sound good? Um, you had some slides, so it, let me know when you want to dig into the slides. Yeah, we can actually dig right in and just start. Slides yeah. are boring, so we can wrap through them, and then we can start yeah, chatting so about I them. I just want to see what you prepared Perfect. a little bit. So like I was saying, I think it's really interesting. So let's tell the audience and kind of let them know what the actual reference Google has. So in their actual developer docs, it just says, no ads. You may not serve or include any advertisements in your API client which is really interesting, right? So you're talking about API clients that by, na by the nature of what they are, like Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn, all of their mobile apps include their mobile versions of their ads, yeah. right? And so Google Glass is saying, nope, at least right now, we're not gonna have you have those, you know, have those ads in there. Yeah. But that confuses me, because fundamentally, there's these new ad types that people are creating on these you know, kind of stream-based networks called sponsored updates or sponsored stories. So yeah. oh, I had a couple examples just to show you. So here's actually a sponsored, I think it's just a sponsored post, and this is on the front page of Yahoo, right? So you can see it's the, it's the actual, the one in the center is a little bit yellow by compare cards, and it just fits right into the news feed that you typically have where I have news from the NBA, things like that, right? You have another one, which is on LinkedIn, so they just recently announced a new ad type, and this is theirs, it's called a sponsored update, which is actually performing really well for LinkedIn, so they're pretty happy about that. But this is in their news feed, it looks like just another update, you can like it, you can comment it, the social actions are there. Right? So if you have a LinkedIn app, app on Glass, you might see something like that. At, at Perhaps, home. right? And are they? Is that considered an ad? Is that so? Yeah. That's the question, right? Is like that's that's what I'm you know I'm confused about, and I'm I'm curious to kind of figure it out. I mean, here's another one on Facebook, the sponsored yeah. page or the sponsored post, and then finally, which you know, here's Twitter, and you can see the little the little uh, orange kind of arrows with the promoted tweet. And so yeah. you have the promoted tweet by Gigya, and then you have some promoted people, some promoted trends on the left hand side. And it's really interesting because is this now considered an app or is this actually just considered content, yeah. right? In which case, can Twitter, when they make, you know, Twitter has their Google Glass app. We can actually look at it right here. So here's um, a couple of screens that I pulled for Twitter's Google Glass app. And I think this is actually just showing a single, I don't have their stream image. I actually don't even know if they have a stream on Google Glass. But they do. They do, right? Yeah. And so I, have I you see seen tweets. any promoted tweets on it? Uh, I have not, but, but it only, the, the Twitter app right now only shows tweets from your friends. Right. Now, right. it might include a promoted tweet, but it doesn't say promoted. It, right, right. Now, because if, uh, let's say, Om Alec is one of the guys I, yep. I listen to, so I see everything that Om writes mm -hmm. on his Twitter account um, on my glass. Now, if he retweeted a promoted tweet, 
I would bet I would yeah. see that, and I, right. I don't know that that would be marked as a promoted tweet because he tweeted it and exactly. sent it to me, right? Yep. So that's a little bit different. And so that's this. where I think that the world might kind of, you know, an ad versus content and how those kind of, how the apps are displaying these ads. Yeah. Really, they're just, just, I mean, it's promoted content, right? It's just being able to, you know, you were telling me a story about, you know, a tweet that you're going to be doing pretty soon and then it's going to get pushed out to folks and then yeah. they're going to actually promote it. It's just, get, it's just basically buying a larger reach because they have these algorithms that you know, only show a status update or a tweet to a, a group of folks. Yeah. And then if you pay a little bit of money to say Facebook, they'll extend that group, they'll extend yeah. that reach, right? But then you have to wonder, I mean, technically it still is an ad unit, right? But at the same time, it's a very different ad unit by nature. It's yeah. not a direct intent ad unit, right? So we're not talking about search ads here. We're it's not like a social. banner ad that's sitting yeah. over on the right or no. something that's interrupted. It's like very much exactly ingrained into your actual workflow. Yeah. And so well, you it's have a mixture of content and a advertisement. Yep. Because yep. And social validation because yep. it says even on the Twitter ad, right, for example, it said Robert Scoble followed this company, right? So it gives you a little bit more incentive. Oh, my friend is following this. Maybe I should take a look. Yep. And so that whole world is kind of mer merging together. And then what I wanted to show you next in one of the final slides is just this is pulled from IAB's um, kind of report for the, you know, 2012. And so out of total $36.6 billion in online advertising, the, you know, 6% came from digital video ads, right? Yeah. And that number is growing. You can see it kind of really small on the right chart with the blue arrow. Digital is continuing to trend up, right? Video, digital yeah. video. And that's really interesting too, because I think the most exciting use case for the Google Glass, at least so far for me and from a consumer perspective, has been just capturing video yeah. in a first person view, right? And yeah. so that's where the whole yeah, world Yeah, if I had of, glass and I took a picture of my Coke can, is that an ad? Well, if Coke promotes it, it is then, yeah. right? So Coke can see that actual tweet that you've actually post, posted now and say, hey, that's kind of unique that Robert Scoble posted up a picture of it, you know, got a really good shot of the Coke can. They can actually just go in, find the tweet, and click promote. Or uh, even if they force you not to put, push through the uh, promoted tweet, Coca-Cola could have a contest. Yeah. You know, take a picture of you yeah. with a Coke can or, yeah. you know, uh, It's a whole whatever. new type, right? And, and that gets pushed through because it's not an ad. They didn't pay me really to create the content, but they're paying, they're holding a contest, right. which could get me to push right. out more experiences, right? And so that's what actually leads me to, to thinking about more of the authoring side. So I think, you know, just to make it clear, I think that apps at some point I don't actually know if sponsored updates and stories are considered ads you know, against the violation for Google Glass. Yeah. I suspect right now they are because they ju they're really new, so people still call them ads. But I think slowly they're not gonna be called ads so much. Well, right? well also, I, one of the things I want for Google Glass is an app for the shopping mall. Right. And there's an app called TagWhat that mm -hmm. you put on your phone and it shows you offers, uh, op actionable offers from Facebook that were made within a hundred yards of you. Exactly. So you walk by a store and it shows you an ad on your phone. Now, is that not allowed? And it's not really an ad because it's a Facebook no, it's, status message. And you want that, right? right? And so there's, so back, so actually a couple of years ago is when I started learning about the mobile side of it and kind of what you just spoke about was geofencing, yeah. right? And so whenever I go into, yeah, when I go into a Safeway, for Explain example. Explain what a geofence is because yeah. I, I know what that is. But sure, sure. So a geofence, let's say that there's a Safeway down the street yeah. and Safeway's marketing team wants to make sure that anytime someone walks into the confines of a Safeway, they see something pop up on their phone, a push notification or something. So they can actually set a geofence around that location, right? Around the XY coordinates of that location. Yeah. And then in that now that location says, okay, this location triggers something, yeah. triggers some kind of event, right? In this case, it'll be event push notification, and the push notifications content will be, you know, two dollars when you buy, a, you know, six tomatoes or something. And, right? and so here's even if uh, Google says no ads, Safeway could release a, a Google Glass app mm -hmm. that you have in your glass. You walk into Safeway, and it could have a to-do list. Yeah, that's not an ad. No, right? that's content. That's yeah. helping me live my life. Right. Yep, exactly. And then it could attach a little line. Hey, there's two dollars off if you buy, you know, uh, Cheerios right now. Exactly. Uh, whatever. And, and, and that would be a shame. And is that an ad? You know, there, there's somebody paying for that. Yeah. And I'm getting an offer, but I'm getting a benefit, right? By True. walking into into uh, Safeway, and they know they know my uh, buying behavior because they have my Safeway card, so I could. I think it would be a huge that. shame if they if they locked off those kind of apps because by the yeah. like it's a wearable device, right? The nature is that you're actually you need you want to interact with it. It wants to make your it wants to enrich your life a little bit. And I think for you know as the question with ads always comes in is how relevant is the ad really to you, yeah. right? And if it starts becoming you know, the case that you start seeing ads for products that you don't at all want in Safeway, 
it might become a little bit annoying, yeah. right? So if ads, we were in a perfect world, in a perfect ad vacuum, where you only saw ads for things that you absolutely wanted, and as soon as you bought that thing, you wouldn't see the ads for it any, anywhere again, right? Which does not happen. We yeah. keep getting retargeted for the same shit that we buy, right? Um, you'd be okay with it, I think, right? I mean, I would be okay with it. Yeah. If they showed me everything I wanted, without having to go and do a Google search and find what I wanted, that'd be awesome, I'd love it. The problem is it's just not there yet. Yeah. And we haven't gotten there, and it's been years and years and years, we're trying to. Well, we totally expect also an app like Google Goggles, not Google Glass, Google mm -hmm. Goggles, where you look at like a box of Cheerios or, or more accurately a, a book in a Barnes mm -hmm. and Noble and it can tell me, uh, oh, Amazon, Amazon has that book and can deliver it to you to mm -hmm. me for $2 less than I yep. can pay for it at Barnes and Noble. Now, Barnes and Noble ain't all that happy about me sure. doing that, but we already have that app on yep. our phone and it works. Is that advertising? I mean, it. I if somebody's paying. Again, yeah, someone's I, paying, right? So there's a transaction, right? There's yeah. some kind of transaction. Or for, somebody could be paying. Right, someone could be paying. It could be algorithmic, and it's just some, the app creator may not have any kind of deal with those kind of guys, yeah. with Amazon, right, or with, um, with Barnes & Noble. But someone's kind of paying. There's some kind of transaction, potentially, and it's promoting a piece of content, right? Yeah. Or it's getting something in, you know, it's a placement, right? It's some kind of placement. You have product placements in TV shows. That's advertising, too, yeah. right? When you see a little Windows laptop going on, you know, on a show. And so all of that is considered an ad, but at the same time, it's also just as you know reasonable to say it's content. Or Here's it's another one. Uh, Google owns Waze now, right? So mm -hmm. when I go home or when I came here, it uh, uh, puts little uh, ads, like Taco Bell ads, on my route. You know, and, right. and it shows me where that Taco Bell is on right. my route, right. and, and it knows it's near my route, so I can right. easily jump off and get some tacos. Yeah. And that's an ad, somebody Definitely. paid for that. And I want ways in my glass because yeah. I want to see where all my friends are and I want to see where the wrecks are and where the cops are and it's get just all that, that traffic I information. I mean, ads, ads have historically had a really bad connotation because they were, they're, they're pushed upon you in very, obtru you know, very intrusive ways. And you know, traditional ads were on the radio, you can turn it off, yeah. right? you can get rid of it. Now you can click away ads very quickly on digital. And so I think that the problem that we're gonna, kind of, we're gonna figure out is that a lot of these businesses who aren't typical ad tech businesses, like you said, Waze, right? Um, or in a lot of cases, you know, any of the, like the, the, book, the, the, the book reader kind of application, for example, yeah. right? It's an ad business, yeah. but an ad for them actually to some extent is a feature, yeah. a price comparison, right? That's actually a feature for them, and sure, it could be the back end of it could be some kind of ad, you know, Dutch auction or something of the sort, but it's still just very much a feature, and so locking out those features could very likely diminish the experience for a lot of these applications, and that would be unfortunate, yeah. right? And I think well, and it, Google's it, not stupid, they know that. They, they know that, and I, I think this is a, a shift in Google's, ad, in, in Google's business model. Uh, today it's advertising, you search for DSLR and it shows you a list of yep. you know, ads over in the right, and that's how they monetize, and they've been doing that really well. Um, in, with a glass, there's an affordance for something else, which is um, show me all the camera co camera stores within a mile of me. Mm -hmm. And Adolf Gasser's right around the corner, so that would pop up. But then uh, another one, you know, the Ritz camera company, could come up and, and buy an ad and say, hey, if you come in right now, I'll give you $10 off your first purchase yeah. know, or something like that. That's an ad, yeah. but it could be part of the search the experience. experience, right? Totally. Uh, and take that further, then I want to say, hey, I, it's you know, it's beer time. Right. I, I'd like a beer. Bring me a beer. Right. You know, and, that's and people gonna are going to pay for the prominence of the listing potentially, right? And they of beers near you, or of the kind of the bars that you could go to, right. where you could grab it, any a beer. Well, and Budweiser might say, hey, you keep buying my competitor. Yeah. I'll give you a free beer to see yep. if I can change your brand preference right In now. In which case, the yeah. consumer wins, you get free beer. Yeah, right. But that's, <laughs> an that's an ad, so is that allowable in this glass I world? don't know, I mean, I think right now they're super, like, And then just straight. let me keep talking. Yeah. I, uh, you, you, I want to tell it, hey, uh, I want a coffee shop near me. I don't know about all the coffee shops, but it'll say, you know, Starbucks and Pete's, which are my two common coffee shops, uh, using this contextual technology that I, I'm writing about, it could know that that's my favorite coffee shop and that the order I, I would choose them. But then it could say, hey, there's another coffee shop around the corner and they'd like to get you in. Right. Um, and they have a better latte, you know. And they can even use social behavior to say 15 of your friends like that latte better than the Pete's and the Starbucks. But that third, that third uh, coffee company could have been an advertisement that mm -hmm. they're paying Google to be included in the list. Mm -hmm. You know, so is that allowed? I mean, on and on, right? I don't know. Where, where is ads going to be fit in? I mean, I think so. I think, you know, I think 
Google's initial claim, I thought, actually was more so focused on search ads, right? I think yeah. they were going to get rid of the idea of search ads, which I think, it, to be honest, I mean, there's just not enough real estate, right? They're, we're also working with a very confined real estate on that screen. And real estate actually was a big reason why people couldn't figure out mobile ads for a very long time. Yeah, go back to the time <coughs> just to, so we can uh, talk. Oh, uh, it died? OK, never mind. All right, let's do that. Uh, So which one would you want me to go back uh, to? The tweets. There you go. Oh, these. Yeah, yeah. So the the what you see in the glass is very content light. Right. You know, very right. much aimed at a notification style thing. Uh, very lightweight. It appears for three seconds, then it disappears. Yep. So that that's not going to be a, a Wired magazine kind of advertisement. Nope. That you sit there and look for tw at it for ten seconds mm -hmm. and really enjoy you know, reading about a new vacation spot or something like that. Right, right. No, definitely not. I mean, I think it's going to be really interesting. I, I also agree with you that where's, where does the line get drawn, right? And so I do think if they take away ads and a lot of, in a, well, your traditional, whatever you want to call an ad, what do you want to call an ad or a content piece, it will diminish the value of a lot of applications today that are frankly becoming better. Like these geofenced applications that are showing me interesting offers where I go, those are useful. I mean, I think they really are helpful to walk in. It's just, you know, you remember the old school Safeway ads, the little red coupon machines and you'd go pull out the coupon, right? They're just delivering that to your phone directly for you. I take a picture of it, you've got it right there. Yeah. That's valuable for a consumer. Right. It's also we're increasingly doing video content. Red Bull does this, right. and hey, I'm an ad. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're talking about content, then we can stick in an ad. Hey, buy Rackspace. You right. Know? And uh, is that allowable? You know. So that's where I'm really interested about a couple of things. So I think that from the consumer perspective, this is all interesting, and I also and, and I don't really know where Google is going to actually open it up and how they're going to open it up. I do suspect that. People will clamor once they open up their apps. Has their app store opened up yet? The uh, Google Glass app store. There's a lightweight one, but I I assume it is going to look completely different okay. when they announce it for the public. Uh, you know, right? When when they actually sell it to the public, right? In the, in, spring of next year. Right. OK. So in that case, I think that app develop, I, think, I think it'll be changed a little bit then. Because I think that's the point where you don't want to diminish functionality necessarily from an application. But what I'm actually really interested about, and I was thinking about this the other night, um, I actually kind of want to build this at ad stage just for fun, is first person advertising. Right, so the perspective that you get, you know, what's that um, that GoPro camera that everyone's yeah. really excited about, which is really cool because it gives you that first person view. It's almost like you're there, right? You have that GoPro that GoPro video of riding on a mountain bike, and you can feel it, and it's it's interesting. And just imagine if you you know if you're you're an advertiser or you're a reporter, right? And you're sitting at an NBA game, you're courtside, and you're watching the finals, and you see Kobe you make a dunk, and you're like, and it's crazy, and everyone's there's just energy, everything around you. Very quickly, you could just record that moment. On your, on your Google Glass, with one tap, you could turn it into a promoted tweet and blast it out. Maybe you're from the NBA, maybe you're from yeah. you know, NBA, you know, CNBC or whatever, sports. And that could be really interesting. I think yeah. as, an, as a quick, lightweight authoring platform, it could be great. And that's even just in a spontaneous moment, which I think could be very fascinating. But yeah. what about in a more planned moment? If you're, you know, your BMW, then you have a new BM, you're, you're racing the new BMW M3, you're sitting behind the actual steering wheel, just seeing that kind of in person view could be incredible. And yeah. People may say that the quality is diminished. It's not a you know it's not a phenomenal DS you know like camera that you're going to be using. Well, I assume right? that's going to change. Right now, the so the um, video is done in software. Right. Uh, the compression, yep. and I know next year it'll be done in hardware. So right. I assume the video quality is going to get better. It'll get better. It's never yeah. going to rival what you actually have in a BMW commercial. But there's there's a brilliance with that, right? There's a kind of there's an artistic sense with. That. I mean, there's a lot of movies lately that have been coming out that are more like hand filmed or so they come off, right? And I think that there's, you know, there's a sense of re realism that people actually can relate to and they could use. And so I think as a kind of as an, right. you know, a new authoring platform for video ads, it could be very cool. Well, and let's think about putting Ashton Kutcher in that car. Right. And now he's like, oh, I exactly. love this the new BMW is what car. Look at this yep. new beautiful screen and electro it's all like electronic. And yep. he starts driving it around. And now all of a sudden, everybody's watching because it's Ashton Kutcher. But it's an ad. Yep. And it's, that can be blocked from my Google Glass. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think that they didn't say anything about ad authoring. So if I use it as a tool to produce mm -hmm. ads, Right? They just said you can't show ads in your actual application. I mean, that's what it clearly said, right? And so I don't, that's why I think that ad authoring is a different case. It's, it's whether I do it on the Google Glass. I mean, initially, let's say we want to hack a version of this together. And, and right? this has already happened because bars are, are invited, certain bars are banning Google Glass because right. they don't want you to be 
you know, spying on their customer. Right. But other bars are inviting Google Glass users to come to the oh, bar really? to experience what it's like to be at the bar. And, and of course, you take a couple pictures and take some videos, and soon we'll have a Vine app and an yep. Instagram video yep. app and all that fun stuff. All of a sudden, you're sharing the experience of the bar with other people. That mm -hmm. gets more people into the bar. And yeah. you know, my brother and I have talked about this because he owns a bar. He's, he's already going to have a Google Glass night. Now, nobody's going to show up in Virginia <laughs> until, until next year. But he's already thinking about, oh, I'm going to get people who can share the experience of going to his bar with other people. That's, that's how marketing is done. Right? Exactly. And so I think that it's going to be really fun. I think I'm actually I'm glad that you brought up geofencing because I keep coming back to that in my mind. I think that's going to be such a clutch piece of this. And it's it's a benefit. That's the whole reason why you're wearing tech, yeah. right? Is so that you can engage with the real world and that tech plays a role in it. And so and then I think video is huge. I think that like to this day, you know, I've I've worn a couple of Google glasses including yours, which you wore in the uh, um, in this video, uh oh, <laughs> right. And yep. So I mean, I guess this could have turned into an ad, Robert, but you know, <laughs> I don't know how. Much it was it, it was on the top to of Buzzfeed. <laughs> it did for it did to some extent, right? Yeah. Um, but anyways, I think that video is going to be very interesting. It's a great medium, and Google Glass will be, I think, an interesting player in it. Yeah, an interesting tool. Talking about geofences, let, let's talk about this kind of use case. Then we got to wrap up. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm I walk into a car dealership, so that BMW car dealership. The Volvo dealership could call my phone, because it's public, mm -hmm. and say, hey, you're looking at buying a BMW, you should come over and check out our new v v Volvos. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, and by the way, if you leave the car dealership right now, I'll give you a $100 bill for showing up at my <laughs> dealership. Because that, yeah. that's worth doing. Yeah, you know, yeah. If I know that you're buying a car, in the profits I'm going to make on that car are probably 1000 to sure. 1500 to $4,000, maybe even more for a luxury car. And now if I can get you off that lot and into my dealership, yeah. that's worth paying you and paying Google, right? Or paying an, another app. But if I do it through the phone or through SMS, mm -hmm. Google can't block SMS, can't block phone calls. Yeah. So how, how are they going to enforce uh, uh, the advertising industry's ban, uh, the ban on I don't advertising? think they will. I think that they're basically just going to be, I think that, exactly. So I think what we're going to find is people just being very creative and clever of the way in which advertising plays a role with Google Glass. It may not be the case that you get your typical search ads or you get your right-hand side ads on the Google Glass, but I think it for sure is going to play a role in various ways, whether it's authoring, whether it's video, whether it's geofence advertisements that are then routed through SMS. It's going to play a way, and I don't think Google can really stop that. And I don't think they should. I think that at that point, you're just going to be stifling awesome creativity, and that would be a shame. What, one minute, what are you building that's coming out? Ad stage. So, um, so right now, we're working on our, our, our next iteration. Um, and it's still very much at a high level, you know, the For same people thing. who don't know what ad stage is. So ad stage is a cross-network ad platform where you can build, deploy, and manage ad campaigns across multiple ad networks from a single interface. So LinkedIn, Facebook, Google AdWords, and Bing Ads. And so our next iteration mm -hmm. is just a further development of that. It's going to be a much larger platform that can appeal to larger spenders and smaller spenders alike. Um, and we'll have, we'll have our own little kind of app ecosystem that, you know, spenders of different ranges can actually use and hopefully uh, make a difference in their advertising uh, habits. Well, I think it's going to be companies like yours that's going to figure out how to route, uh, route around the rules. So if, you, I hope if so. they block <laughs> a certain kind of ad or block all ads, then you've got to figure out other ways to get in front of my Google Glass. So. I hope so. I think that companies, agnostic companies to some extent, who are trying to play nice with all the different technologies, will be the folks who go out and have fun with it. And so. Hope and so. In a future conversation, I'm going to talk to AdBlock, <laughs> so, <laughs> so the people who block ads, nice. there's a need for that too, and Absolutely. we're going to see if there's going to be ad blockers for this new world as well. Cool. So thank you so much. Thanks for having uh, me. AdStage.com. AdStage. Ad stage, well, that works too, but AdStage.io is the main one. .io. Thank you very much. Thanks. Fun conversation.